Good morning, Bethel Church. I'd like to uh, welcome you to our Thanksgiving Day service. I'd like to welcome the people joining me in this overflow room here at the uh, Bethel Church building. I'd like to welcome you all joining us uh, via live stream. Also would like to welcome um, other members of the family, maybe friends visiting for this Thanksgiving Day. Welcome to our Thanksgiving Day service. For our call to worship, I'd like to read from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good, or is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. Why? For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's now worship the Lord our God to our first song for the beauty of the earth.
we'll have this uh, litany of thanksgiving. And um, I'd like to invite everyone, I, uh, those of you who are joining us online, I hope you can uh, be able to read the uh, words uh, projected uh, on the screen behind me. Um, this uh, litany has three readers, leader, people, and all. Leader, that's me. People, that's you. All, that's you. <laughs> that's, uh, all of us uh, can read that part. Let us uh, remember to uh, thank the Lord our God through this litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our rock, our fortress, and our deliverer. Let us remember his mercy, for he is gracious and compassionate. We thank you for calling us to faith in Christ, for putting your spirit within us, for giving us the mind of Christ, for gathering us into your church. We thank you, Lord, for extending your grace to us, for calling us to a life of gratitude, for calling us to service in your kingdom. Thanks be to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he satisfies the thirsty. He fills the hungry with good things, and he heals the afflicted. Let us celebrate his abundant goodness. We thank you, gracious Father, that you provide for all our needs, for the food on our tables, for the clothes on our bodies, for the beds we sleep in, and for the dwellings that shelter us. We praise you for all your gifts that go beyond our basic needs, for the things that make our work easier, for the conveniences of modern life, for the beauty and pleasure that you bring into our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, this time, we'd like to uh, remember um, our sister Katie sent an email to uh, Battle People asking, encouraging, inviting the people to um, write down reasons for Thanksgiving and to uh, send those uh, written reasons of Thanksgiving back to her. And uh, I think she has received quite a few, a lot, many. <laughs> a number <laughs> and um, we they now have the privilege of reading those notes at this time so listen to these reasons for Thanksgiving sent in by your brothers and sisters here at Bethel Church the Romos are thankful for God's love provision and protection throughout the year we thank God especially for helping us have peace and love in our home and for the Holy Spirit in our lives. Frida Mansfield is grateful to belong to her brothers and sisters in Christ here at Bethel. She is grateful to be a part of this church. Hermana Hernández, quiero agradecer a Dios por todas sus bendiciones a mi familia y a mí por la salud que provee a nuestras necesidades por el grupo de oración en español que tuvimos 15 días de ayuno y oración en el mes de octubre gracias Señor fue de gran bendición por la vacuna para el COVID-19 que fue una de nuestras peticiones y doy gracias por la iglesia en general por todos los pastores, diáconos ancianos y la congregación The God of say as the year 2020 is coming to an end there are many things we are thankful for as a family. We are thankful for Jesus and the gift of salvation. 
We are thankful for our beautiful kids, Jonah and Aria, and the opportunity God gives us to watch them grow each day. We are thankful for our parents and the blessing they are to our lives, for our siblings, their spouses, and their children. We are thankful for our new nephews, Jack Michael Howell and Benjamin Roy Gatto. We are thankful for our jobs and for our health. We are thankful for our neighbor and friend, Katie. We are thankful for God's faithfulness and unconditional love. The Claussens are grateful to the Lord for his faithfulness throughout this year. We praise him for excellent medical care for Ken throughout his treatments, surgery, and procedures, steady progress in returning strength, safe family gatherings for celebrations, including our 50th wedding anniversary and wedding of our granddaughter, the life of faith Kathy's brother lived and for his home going to Jesus, the legacy of generations of faith, fellowship and love and service with our church family here in Michigan, the beauty of the earth, the love of family and friends. Abraham y Noemi, gracias a Dios por las manifestaciones de su amor y fidelidad para con nosotros, por la familia, por la iglesia Bethel, por la esposa que Dios me ha dado, por las hijas y nietos que son la alegría de nuestro hogar, por darnos la bendición de servirle y adorarle día con día. Por esto y muchas cosas más. Gracias, Dios. And finally from me, Katie, I am thankful for the legacy of faith passed down to be passed down to me by my grandma, who passed away this fall. I am thankful for the Van Heisen family that I was born into, for my friends here at Bethel, who are my family in Christ and family in my heart. I am thankful for God's gracious gift of healing in my life. I am thankful for God speaking to me through the Bible. And I am thankful that no matter my circumstances, I can always find hope, peace, joy, love, and grace in God.
Turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Suggested Old Testament reading in today's lectionary is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. So let's start our Bibles there, and I will read verses 7 through 18. The people of Israel are about to enter the land of Canaan, the land the Lord has promised to give to his people. And let's listen now to God's servant Moses as he addresses Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning at verse 7 through verse 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs of flowing, springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can be copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build, find houses, and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, he led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known, to humble and to test you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Verse 18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. If God's people, the people of Israel in today's text, would receive Katie's email sent to better people two days ago asking for reasons for Thanksgiving, what do you think the people of Israel would say or write down? What would be the reasons for being thankful? I was trying to imagine, and I believe many of the people there would write something like, thanks for God, for the good land that God gave. I was also thinking of their leader Moses, you know, the godly servant of God. Okay? Perhaps he would write down something like, thanks for God bringing us to the promised land. And I also would like to believe that he would write something like this. Thankful for God's faithfulness. If you look at verse 10, Moses instructs the people of Israel how to properly respond to God's faithfulness, to God's goodness. He says, praise the Lord your God. To praise means to adore, to speak well of God's greatness and goodness. 
The word praise includes the acts of giving glory, blessing, commending, honoring, thanking, celebrating, and rejoicing. Based on today's text, I'd like to share with you three reasons for thanking God. Number one, we as God's people should praise and thank the Lord for all his good gifts. Again, verse 10, Moses told Israel to praise the Lord for the good land he has given you. And how good was this land? What other blessings did God give Israel as uh, bonuses, part of that good land? Well, for one, the land has bountiful water supply. Look at verse 7. A land with brook streams and deep springs gushing out into the valley and the hills. The land has crops, fruit, oil, honey. Verse 8. A land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey. A land plenty of food supply. Look at verse 9. A land where bread will not be scarce and dew will lack nothing. A land that's rich in mineral deposits, according to verse 9, the first part, like iron, copper, and then there was mention of silver, gold. And in this good land, God, God gave His people the privilege, the opportunity to eat and be satisfied. Verses 10 and 12. I know many people today will eat. I just don't know how many people will be satisfied. I hope they, they eat and be satisfied. Also, the people of Israel would be able to build fine houses, not just cheap houses, fine houses, and not just to build houses. They'll be able to occupy them, to settle down. There's no war, no enemies to drive them from the houses they have built. And also, that they would acquire resources Herds, flocks, silver, gold, and those resources would increase and multiply. God also gave them a warning, reminding them that it's because of God that they receive all these blessings and not because of their power and the strength of their heart. God said, you may say, you may say it's because of my strength and my power that I have produced this wealth. No. Look at verse 18. Even the ability to produce wealth comes from the Lord. Do not be tempted to think that your strength, your power, enabled you to produce is well. People of God, the Lord would like us to praise and thank Him for all the blessings that He has given us. He also wants us to praise Him not merely from our lips, but from our sincere hearts. Hearts that are right, that, 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 that are right with God. Hearts that recognize that indeed God is the true source of everything that we enjoy, of everything that we have. As James himself testifies, James chapter 1 verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes or is from above, from our powerful, good, and loving God. If we would think that we produce our wealth, by our own power and the strength of our hands, according to Moses, our hearts have become, what? Proud. And we would be guilty of forgetting the Lord, our God. Verse 14. I encourage all of us to indeed count the many blessings we receive from the Lord and praise, thank Him for such blessings from our sincere hearts. The second reason we praise the Lord for His acts of grace, 
for his gracious acts. I love the way Moses pointed out God's acts of grace in today's text. In verse 7, Moses says that God is the one bringing his people, bringing Israel into a good land. And after Moses warned Israel against becoming proud and forgetting the Lord their God, he took Israel on a trip down memory lane and reviewed with them, mentioned to them instances, events, examples wherein God showed them his gracious acts. Look at verse 14, particularly the second part of that verse. Moses says that the Lord he is the one who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. Exodus 3 8, God promised, I will rescue my people from the hand of the Egyptians. I will bring them up out of the land of Egypt and bring them into a good land, a good and spacious land. No, Israel did not do anything you know, for God to come up with a rescue mission out of his love for his people God promised to bring them to freedom to liberate them from Egypt from slavery well they doubted they even complained quarreled not just with Moses but with God but God fulfilled what he promised to them because of his grace Verse 15, the Lord is the one who led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. They were complaining. They were grumbling. They were quarreling with the leaders, with Moses and Aaron, even testing God. Yet God led them out of the wilderness by his grace. Second part of verse 15. The Lord is the one who brought you water out of hard rock. You remember? People were complaining, warning. That's why, that's why the place was called Meribah. Place where Israel quarreled with Moses and even put God to the test. That's why the place was also called Massa. Yet God provided them water from the rock. God also was the one, according to Moses, who fed Israel with manna in the wilderness. Verse 16, something your ancestors had never known to humble and test you. And God's purpose for such gracious acts was so that in the end, you know, it might go well with his people. You know, all of God's gracious acts will always bring his people to experience good. Even the covenant that God himself initiated and established with his people was another act of God's grace. By grace, the Lord our God has saved us from his own judgment through his Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. By grace, the Lord our God has forgiven us, has protected us, has guided us, provided for our needs, comforted us, strengthened us. He has taught us. He has corrected us. He has rebuked us. It is always through God's gracious acts that we will receive, we will get and enjoy everything that we need in life. And so let's praise our God for His amazing grace that He continues to pour upon us each day. Let's continue to desire, to experience, and depend on God's grace to help us in our time of need. Hebrews 4, verse 16. The third reason we should praise and thank God for His faithfulness. 
The good land was God's promise to his chosen people, Israel. Although it took so many years, you know, so many testing, so many desert wanderings, so many acts of disobedience, you know, on the part of Israel. Yet God fulfilled his promise to his people and brought them to the promised land. Even the stories highlighted by Moses in this text, you know, the Lord bringing them out of Egypt, out of slavery, you know, the Lord leading them through the wilderness, the Lord bringing, providing for them water from the hard rock and feeding them manna and quail in the wilderness. Those are stories also of God's faithfulness to his people, which they had doubted. Still God remained faithful to his promise, to his word. Because God is always true to his promise, and we can always trust and depend on his promise, on his word. Let us remember to thank God for fulfilling his promise, particularly his promise to send his one and only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, so that our sins can be forgiven and we who believe would be reconciled with God and enjoy this loving, loving relationship with Him forever. Brothers and sisters, that's a huge reason for us to praise and thank God for this Thanksgiving Day and always. We may find it difficult to thank the Lord, praise Him, worship Him in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of uncertainties, of worries, of pain. And yet the Lord himself promises us, particularly in his word, that he will always be there for us. That he will never ever leave us. And that he will give us comfort. First Corinthians or Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 4. He will give us comfort so that we will be able even in the midst of our difficulties in the midst of troubles to praise Him to worship Him to speak well of His goodness and greatness to thank Him also by serving Him <coughs> to serve Him by giving comfort to other people brothers and sisters here at Bethel Church, let us remember to praise and thank the Lord for and continue to depend on His goodness, on His grace, and on His faithfulness. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we praise you for the many blessings you have given us and for the many ways we have received your grace. We praise you not only for all that you have given and have done for us, O oh Lord, but also for who you are, our powerful, loving, gracious, faithful, Help us to continue to grow in your love and in your grace and enable us to show your love, your grace to all the people just as you have called us to do, O oh Lord, as your people and to do this for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as you continue to celebrate today, again, um, praise God and thank Him for uh, His faithfulness in terms of uh, supplying all our needs. The days, weeks, months have uh, not been easy for many, and yet uh, we can testify to God's continuing goodness and faithfulness to us. Um, also would like to encourage you to continue to be mindful of um, people who are in need and um, I pray that uh, God will give you that um, sense of uh, recognizing um, what their needs are and the things that you have that you can extend to them in order to help meet their needs so it's a good day to um, Bless the Lord our God by helping others uh, meet their needs. Also, would like to thank you for your continuing generosity in uh, giving to uh, the church, uh, so that the church can continue to um, um, minister uh, God's word to people, bring the good news, and continue to do acts of mercy and help those who are in need. So, I'd like to thank you again for giving to the church. And again, happy Thanksgiving to all, and uh, thank you for joining us in this worship uh, service. Um, the Lord is uh, blessing you now. So, those who are in this room, feel free to stand up. And at home, you can sit down or stand up. But uh, brothers and sisters, congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ, as you continue to celebrate with friends and loved ones, mindful of God's goodness, thinking about the many things that you have received from his loving hand, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the unfailing love of God the Father, the continuing fellowship, guidance, leading of the Holy Spirit be with all of you now and always. Amen. Amen.